to get started, the first step would be to open the Abrislink for MailChimp application in the Clover app market. Um, we have three subscription tiers here, uh, Basic, Advanced, and Ultimate. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, you'll need to use Advanced or Ultimate to get the advanced segmentation features we'll be covering today. So once you've chosen your subscription, go ahead and click Accept and Install, and you'll be brought into the application itself. And the application will first ask you whether or not you already have a MailChimp account. If not, it'll just bring you to a simple form where you can sign up for a MailChimp account. Um, but if you do, um, as you'll see here, it'll redirect you to a page where you'll be able to log in using your MailChimp credentials. Now, this is a different login than you use to log into Clover. This is the login that you use to log in to MailChimp. So once you're redirected, you'll be able to enter in your credentials here your username and password for your MailChimp account. And then you can press login and that'll authenticate you into our application. So as you can see here, um, our, our account is already set up. Um, and this is just a reminder, if you have already set up your account, uh, the settings are already saved. But the first step here is choosing which list you want to upload to. These are the lists that are created within MailChimp. Um, so you can just choose a list right here. We'll send it to new list. So what we're going to do here is um, this will send all of our existing contacts from Clover in the last 30 days over to MailChimp. And then every day um, or instantly, uh, depending on your subscription, it'll send those contacts over. As you can see here, the settings have been saved. Um, so we've saved that list um, into our database. So we know exactly where to send it automatically. Um, so any new contacts will be synced over uh, to your MailChimp account. As you can see in our account, we don't have any new contacts, but that's okay. Any new contacts that are collected in Clover will automatically be synced to MailChimp. So here we get to log in to our MailChimp account using that same username and password for MailChimp. And then once we log in here, you can see our lists here, uh, the different lists that we've created over time. You can see that new list, the one that we had uh, chosen to send the contacts from Clover to automatically. We click on the list, um, it'll show us kind of an overview of the different customers that are in our list here. We can scroll down and take a look at them or click on them individually to inspect them and look at their uh, transaction history over time as well. A couple options we can do here in terms of managing our subscribers, um, adding subscribers, um, and managing the settings as well. Um, but what we're going to work on today um, is the segments. Um, that's the way that you can segment out certain groups of your customer base. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new segment. Uh, we're going to jump right into one of the examples that we gave in the invitation email here. You can see there are a lot of different uh, things that we can segment our customers based on. Uh, we're going to focus on the e-commerce section. I know it says e-commerce, um, but that's where you will do the segmenting uh, for the Clover purchases. So you can see here, uh, this first segment is going to be for customers that spent more than $25. Um, right now we just have one customer in that segment. When we save it as a segment here, um, it gives us the option to auto-update. So that's important there. So any customers that come in now and spend more than $25, they'll automatically be added to the segment. Um, so you can come back to this segment after we save it, and then you'd be able to send out emails to those customers. Um, manually. If you have any questions as I'm going along, please feel free to add them into the chat. Uh, send them to me directly um, and I'll get to those at the end of the uh, conversation here. So once we save that, you see that it's there and saved. Um, we can you know, send an email to them as we'd like, just manually or as I'm going to show you here in a few minutes how to do that so it automates the process and does it all automatically. But as promised, we got a couple more segments that I'd like to go over um, to just give you a better understanding of how these can work. So let's go back to the uh, full list here, um, get rid of that current segment, and let's create a new one here. Once again, we're going to go into this drop down, down into e commerce. Uh, we're going to look at um, a specific uh, product purchased. 
Um, so what we can do here is that drop down actually shows all the products the customers have purchased that have been imported from your Clover. So you can just scroll down to the particular product uh, that you want to filter through by. In our case, I think we're going to go with, let's see, Furtada here. There we go. And then when we preview the segment here, we can see we got a couple customers here, including myself, that have bought a Furtada before. Um, so when we save this one down, um, we'll want to keep that auto update on as well. Um, and then once again, we can start sending emails directly to this uh, segment, or we can uh, do some automation here, which we'll go over here in a second. So let's uh, get this one saved, give it a name. Go ahead and save it. Great. Okay, so that one's saved. See, we have two segments there. One I already made earlier uh, for people that have purchased more than 30 days uh, before. Uh, but let's go ahead and edit it. I'll show you there are a couple other things we can do here with the segmentation. Um, not only uh, do we have that purchase date, we do not within, within, is before, or is after. Um, so there's just some pretty flexible uh, conditions. One other thing we can do here is we can add a second condition onto this segment. Um, so if we want uh, not within 30 days and say we'll do purchase date, uh, let's see, is, to is, is after. Right, so, you know, they didn't purchase within the last 30 days, but it was after a certain date, right? Um, so someone who had purchased this year. We can add that in as well if we want to have those two conditions included. Uh, but for our purposes, we'll just leave that one as is. And we'll uh, head on over to the Automation tab. I'll show you how we can set these up to uh, send emails automatically. So we've already created one automation workflow here, um, but let's go ahead and create another one. When you go to the Explore Automations page and you're creating a new one, we'll go down and we'll go ahead and do custom. Um, we'll create a custom automation workflow. And we'll click right there for add automation. So we have to give our automation a name. And we also have to select the list. Uh, make sure you select the same list that your Clover customers are being added into. Um, and then just give it a, a name, a memorable name. In this case, we'll do bought more than $25. When we click next, this will bring us to the automations page here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make some changes to this workflow and set it up so it's just the way we want it. First and foremost, we're going to edit this segment here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose a segment. And we're going to use that exact uh, existing segment that we had created before. So what happens is when this uh, workflow is triggered, customers will only get the email if they had an order for more than $25. So that's how the segment works in with the workflow. Once we have the segment saved, um, there are a couple other options that we can configure. Um, we can set an action, um, which is what happens after the sending. We can make some changes here to the list or to the recipient, but for our purposes, we're just gonna skip it and we'll click cancel there. We can change the schedule. This is really neat. Um, you can set which day you'd like these emails to be sent. So if there are only specific days that you'd like your recipients to get these emails, you can choose exactly which days they'll be automatically sent out. And you can also set uh, a specific time or a time frame. So we'll do a time frame, say 9 to 5, uh, for our email example here. Once again, if you have any questions, please just put it in the comments uh, or chat section, and I'll be sure to get to those when we're done here in a couple of minutes. So we'll save that schedule here. And our workflow is just about set. The last thing we have to do is set the trigger. So the trigger is when this workflow is initiated. So we already set the filter, which chooses who it gets sent to. Uh, our trigger here, we're going to set it under e-commerce, 
uh, to purchase any product. So what that means is when anyone purchases anything uh, from your business, they'll be added to this workflow. And then with the segment, it'll choose from all of those customers which ones get the email. So once we have this all set up, we'll go ahead and we'll update the trigger. Now that we have the settings configured, the last step of configuring this automation workflow is designing the email that our customers will be receiving. So once we click the design email button here, we have a couple uh, settings that we have to set here, including the email subject for this email, the from name and then the from email address. Once we're happy with those, we can go ahead and we can choose a design or a template for our email. MailChimp has a lot of fantastic templates that you can use, uh, but we're just going to go with simple text here for the sake of example. We can do a little preview here. That looks great, nice and simple for our purposes. And we'll go ahead and select it. The MailChimp email editor is really fantastic and easy to use. Uh, lots of nice drag and drop features. Um, See, so we can just drag right in uh, a, a uh, image card here. We get upload an image. Uh, we can change the caption. There's just a lot of very easy, intuitive uh, features to this interface uh, that makes it really nice for email marketing. So we just need to craft our message here, uh, really make it personal for our customers, let them know that we value their business, right? Something nice and uh, straightforward. While I'm working on getting this filled out here, just a reminder again, if you have any questions, please just put it in the comments, uh, the chat box, and we'll get to those here in a couple of minutes. We're just about done with this demo here. So as we're adding in text here, uh, you can see that there are many different uh, components that we can add in, uh, even to just the, the text fields. Um, we can add in a line break here. Uh, we can also add a link if we want to add links to our website. And all those links are tracked too by MailChimp, um, so they can let you know exactly what your customers are clicking on when they receive the uh, emails. So that looks pretty good to me. I think our customers will really like this email. We add in social buttons, as you can see there as well. Um, but great, uh, our email is there. We can go ahead and click Next uh, to finish up building this workflow. You can see right there, everything ready to send. We can review the workflow, and we're happy with it. Go ahead and click Start Workflow. And just like that, customers will start receiving our emails automatically when they spend more than $25. So rock on, <laughs> we did it. At this point, um, let's go ahead and get started on some question and answer. Uh, I see a lot of good questions here already. Uh, so give me one second here to get reconfigured and I'll jump right into answering some of these questions.